Howard introduce himself. I, I, I see he's in the audience uh, there. I'll, I'll cue it up, I believe. And uh, are you with us, Howard? I'm here. Yeah, I think. Here. Oh, cool. Cool. So, All right. So I'm going to turn it over to you. And, uh, you know, then we'll do a little networking break after that before we go into our sixth and final session here. Uh, I just can you explain one thing to me, Matt. I see there are 10 participants on my screen. Is that the audience or are there other people someplace? So, so the, the, the event is the events being live streamed on several channels. It's in a metaverse channel um, with the uh, menthol protocol. Um, I, I believe we have it on a, a Facebook or, or an Instagram and a, a, maybe a YouTube as well. Um, and I, 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 and so, yeah, so there's audience beyond what you're seeing on your screen right, there. That, that's all um, I need to and, and then we're also going to be taping things. Um, we've been yeah. having people in and out all day because it is a 24 hour event as well. So we've, we've caught a number of different uh, audiences. Yeah. Thank okay. you. All right. So uh, yeah, I'm Howard Fisher. Abasso Capital is a uh, hedge fund business that I'm no longer involved with. Um, no need to talk about that. Uh, I think it's interesting to follow up. Um, with uh, Deborah's discussion of Third Act, which is an organization that I've supported and admire. Um, and it fits into the theme under which Gratitude Railroad was founded. And the concept of Gratitude Railroad is that capitalism can provide the solution to most of the issues that people who would choose to listen to this call care about. Let's call it largely social justice, social equality, racism, and of course, the climate, and that capitalism consciously applied um, with the belief that competitive non-concessionary returns will attract the trillions of dollars of capital that we need to address these issues, whether it's transformation from fossil energy to, to, to alternative energy, green energy, renewable energy, changing our agriculture system to renewable from chemical-based to creating um, economic mobility and equality and opportunity for all people. When we founded Gratitude Railroad, myself and my co-founder, Eric Jacobson, in 2013, we took a, around, a look around the world of what we knew about impact investing at the time. And we saw a lot of well-meaning people. Um, we saw a lot of conference going and a lot of book writing and letter writing and, and white paper writing, but nobody was actually moving capital. Um, so the core value of Gratitude Railroad, which differentiates us from the wonderful peers we have, and there are some who are doing what we're doing as well, of course, in the impact investment world is our core focus and our membership, our participants actively commit to investing capital in the businesses whose product or service um, benefits climate or some kind of social um, effort, social concern. What we, what we thought about as we formed Gratitude Railroad was that there are three forms of capital in the world. And we learned this from a professor at the Harvard Business School named Michael Porter. There's the charitable pool, which is wonderful and important, but also unsustainable, um, inefficient and bureaucratic, and is certainly not enough money to solve the problems in the world. The government, um, and specifically focused here in the U.S., where, where our work is, is, is based, can be a great partner. And, you know, something like the victory we had in the Inflation Reduction Act, which theoretically will, will channel hundreds of billions of dollars into various efforts that will make the environment better and support the businesses that are doing that is great, but it's unreliable, it's at risk, um, and hard to really manage. Um, the only thing and where the most money is, is in commerce, right? We need trillions and trillions of dollars and the biggest pools of, of capital reside in the wealth holders, the banks that, that Deborah was speaking about and the investment companies. So we felt that we could help create an entity that would identify the kinds of businesses and the kinds of funds that would be trusted and respected by all investors, regardless of their beliefs now in, in the 10 years since we began Gratitude Railroad, of course, like everything else, unfortunately, there's been a, a deep politicization of those kinds of thoughts so that even if we bring an investment to the fore that has competitive returns and a good solid business plan, there are people who reje would reject it because it comes from the, to use a terrible word, the woke economy. 
nonetheless, we're forging forward. Um, over the last 10 years, Gratitude Railroad has been responsible for directly and influencing well over $500 million of capital into early stage businesses and funds and managers who are driving the capital of investors who do actually care about those issues into these kinds of businesses and companies. Um, I don't know if you want me to stop and answer questions, but I can certainly keep talking about the work that we do, the way we do it, and why we do it. Um, I guess the answer is to keep talking, right, Matt? Yeah, no, uh, I, I was... Uh... I would, we're we're towards the end of the session, so at some point I'm going to actually have to jump off to get the next session set up. Yeah. yeah. But uh, the the sixth session, but uh, we we still got a little bit of time here. So, um, what do you think? Like some of the biggest challenges are getting people to switch, and and what can we do to to get more of them to switch yeah. over? Because, like you said, the the tools are there. We've been talking uh, all day about how there's good returns, oftentimes, and uh, you know, you're not sacrificing returns. Um, you just need to step forward and take an action and, and take that first step. I think once you get your toe in the water, it's pretty comfortable. And once you take a financial action, that action that kind of keeps going because right. you 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 act once and the money's then over and then it's constantly having positive impact. Absolutely true. So um, that's exactly what we were founded to do. So the, at the inception, it was simply Eric and I moving capital and over time, we began to develop a bigger and bigger community of people who are willing to do that. So to me, to some extent, it's that network effect. If we can continue to add to the people actively engaged in our work, and they were, and if they are enjoying it and they're impressed and they're seeing positive results, they will continue to grow the network, which is why again, you know, we went from moving hundreds of thousands of dollars to moving tens of millions of dollars. We have to make the opportunities be legitimate in the eyes of all investors. They have to be run professionally. They have to be staffed with talented people. They have to be structured in a way that's attractive. Um, so that's part of it. The work of Gratitude Railroad adds a dose of community and, and, and interactivity, again, similar to the nature of Third Act, gathering people you know, in my age cohort and older who want to do things together. Uh, part of the work of Gratitude Railroad is engaging people, most of whom are in later stages of their careers, have significant time available to engage in the diligence process, the networking process, and importantly, supporting the organizations in which we invest. So by gathering them and getting their enthusiasm, it also improves the potential outcome of the entities in which we invest. And each of us act as ambassadors the companies that we support. So it's getting that message out on a daily basis. Again, you know, you think about Third Act, where there's more of an activism, um, sort of day of protest kind of thing. We are talking to our companies every day. We hold meetings almost every month, certainly every six weeks. We have gatherings in cities around the country just about every month to continue to grow the com community of people who can see the kinds of companies we're investing in, can see the kinds of funds that we're creating, and understand that the people who are investing in these in these entities and these and these funds are legitimate, serious, hardworking, experienced investors putting their own capital work, all of which inspires more of that. Some of it comes from the kinds of companies in which we invest. There's a phrase that I use to describe some of our investing, which is called climate to the people, because it's great for people who for whom it's, you know, that's their first thinking, people for whom costs may be sec secondary, right? Bill Gates calls it the, the green premium. So he flies around on his private jets and he pays extra money for, for sustainable jet fuel. Great, that's wonderful. But how can we bring products to the marketplace like solar energy clearly is that will improve people's lives, serve the environment and reduce the costs? So one of the ways that we do our work is identifying companies whose product or service does exactly that. So. We had uh, earlier in the day, we had Switchco. They're, they're, they're an Indian startup, uh, but they've been working on getting, you know, aligning with products and, and, and even developing some of their own products, like, you know, a bamboo toothbrush, it's the same price as a plastic toothbrush and, and, and other things like that. And they figured out a way to actually take people's waste, take companies' waste, um, 
some of which is is disposable waste without much value, but others it actually has value. And then, you know, uh, you know, provide then the products with the company sort of as a trade. And, and it's a little more easy for the companies to look at it that way, like, oh, hey, we're actually getting something out of it. Exactly. And uh, so you I know, give an then, example, of, if you want, uh, one of our portfolio companies, very similar to that. That's a, to me, an ideal climate to the people company if we have the time to do that. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to get sure. into that, sure. we uh, so we have we have a company in our portfolio that goes by the name of Wasted, just W A S T E D. Wasted is in the porta potty business. Uh, in a normal average porta potty, the liquids and the solids are combined in a single bucket. When you put the liquids and the solids together, you get ammonia produced. So it adds to the unpleasantness of the experience in being in a public porta potty. In addition, some sort of playing off of what you just said, that waste material has no value to the owner of the porta potty, and it has to get trucked out and shipped to a sewage plant. They have to pay a tipping fee for them to take it away, and it then gets treated in the sewage plant, and really no value comes out of it. Waste, it has developed a technology. It's not really highly complicated technology that separates the liquids from the solids. So first of all, you don't get that horrible smell. Importantly, now that the solids are segregated, they can be composted into a soil amendment and the liquids can be processed into a nitrogen fertilizer. Normally, nitrogen-based fertilizers are petroleum-based and they're heavily polluting and, and not really very good, especially in a regenerative farming process. By doing that, again, so it's a better customer experience. The facility is cleaner. There's a sign inside that explains to the users why this is a better experience, so climate to the people. But importantly, from an economic point of view, they've taken an expense, the tipping fee paid for their waste slurry into a revenue stream. So from a business perspective, they could charge a competitive market price for their porta potties and make significantly more money, or they can, they can charge a below market price and still make more money and capture market share. So to me, there's a, a tremendous brilliance, there's a simplicity, there's a user experience, there's a customer experience, and there's a great benefit to the environment. So that's the ideal kind of company that we're seeking. Of course, that's a small company, it may grow, uh, and, and, and the problems that we're facing on a planetary basis are far larger than that, but there are other ways to address it. But this is, I think, a good sort of example to explain how we're trying to address these issues. Well, there's there's millions of those type of company, well, thousands for sure, if not maybe millions. Um, I invested in one, Pete, uh, that that goes around New York City and takes food waste from restaurants. It distills it down, you know. So again, the restaurants normally have to pay to have that taken away. Mm -hmm. They're distilling the 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 food waste into a, a medium block where they grow uh, premium mushrooms. And uh, and and they've they've worked out deals with some of the landlords where they they are either getting a break on the rent or you know it's sort of towards an ESG type of mandate and so they're getting even some free space and so then they're growing the mushrooms and then they're selling them back these premium mushrooms to the restaurants where they they got the food waste from. Sounds like a beautiful thing, right? So yeah, like the point is we can solve so many problems simply economically efficiently and create a positive return for investors. We do need much larger, highly scalable operations to do that. They can't all be bespoke and artisanal and local. Um, so you know, we've done a lot of investing and we've invested in municipal composting. We've invested a lot in community solar and solar companies that are finding ways to get solar to lower and middle income neighborhoods and individuals. So there's a lot that can be done with the capital. And it's just a matter of, I think, Having inspiring stories, having success, having professionalism in the process. So it doesn't look like just an investment club whose priority is a social mission, but it looks like a serious investment process. So if you were, were to join our group, you would find at the end of the day, before we wrote a check, that there would be a 30, 40, 50 page investment memo that would explain the business and all the work that we've done that would largely rival the kind of work that you would see if you were sitting at the investment committee of any other kind of venture capital firm. Sure, and and we've had some guests like that on uh, uh, 
Reba uh, from CapShift was on. They, you know, they deal with a lot well, of well, CapShift. So they, again, I'm an investor in CapShift. I'm a client of CapShift. It's a perfect idea of all these people who have DAFs who let the DAF money sit in, in invested in conventional non-impact investments, and by using CapShift as the as the custody agent and the investor platform for their for their DAF, they can also move money into these kinds of investments. Again, when you think about CapShift and the people who founded CapShift and the, and the investors in CapShift, it's also a very serious, very capable, let's say, call me accepted group of investors who also lend, lend credibility to that concept. Absolutely. And, and we had AquaSpark on and I'm an investor there and they've had some very top-notch returns. Yeah, love that. Well, brilliant, brilliant concepts. Great team. Yeah. And uh, um, kind of a, an up and coming DC fund, Sarah uh, Nolette was on uh, earlier, you know, with, uh, you know, some of her investments that have panned out very nicely, her and her partner and, uh, and carbon uh, growth partners as well. Again, more uh, institutional side guys, they opened a fund 60 plus percent return the first year. Um, okay. So, you know, doing doing good can, uh, you know, do well for you as well. Exactly. Um, and uh, so uh, it looks like uh, we up. got, uh, well, yeah, we it's time's just about up and we got, That's a okay, I have to go to another meeting too. I appreciate the opportunity to share, um, you know, there's follow up. I'm more than happy to uh, chat with yeah, people. Who yeah, we're going to distill a lot of the, these tapes down because I think a lot of them are educational and we're going to group them in different ways. Um, did If you have a minute, did anyone have any questions or otherwise we'll, we'll let Howard go to his next meeting and uh, we're starting our sixth and final session um, in uh, about just over five minutes and I'm going to hop over there and uh, you guys, anyone can come off mute here and, and talk to each other, but I'm going to uh, Hop over there, and uh, thank you so much, uh, Howard. You, everybody, we'll get your details up on site, and uh, it'd be good to connect with you because I, 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 I'm interested in some of your more investments, yeah. and, and maybe how I can you, get involved with you guys you, as well. You, you live in Denver, is that where you are? I, I, I'm an I'm an hour outside of Denver normally. Actually, right now I'm I'm at uh, CSU where my daughter is in Fort Collins, but I right. I'm normally. Okay. All right. Yeah. Congrats on your event. Happy Earth Day. Thanks yeah. for having me. Take yeah, if every yeah, thank you, Deborah. And if everyone can, you know, is involved with an Earth Day event tomorrow, you know, there's there's outdoor events. This was more of an indoor one. But uh um yeah, appreciate all you guys appreciate everyone who have participated in, in session five and some good good material and good questions and good presentations. And uh yeah, thank you guys right. uh, so much. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. Bye-bye.